Hi everybody and welcome to Rocco Baby Crochet. I hope you're all well and having a great week. I've got a really beginner friendly project for you here today. It's one of those projects that's great if you just want to use up a little bit of your yarn in your stash as well. And we're making some cases for AirPod covers. So some little protective pouches just so you can pop them in your handbag and not worry about your case getting scratched. So I've already made two. Um, I'm going to be using this green yarn again so what you'll need for this tutorial so I'm using Rico Designs Creative Cotton it was some left over from the shopping bag pattern that I put out a couple of weeks ago and it's an iron weighted cotton you'll need a four millimeter crochet hook a pair of scissors a button to attach to the front mine measures 15 millimeters in diameter so a centimeter and a half is the measurement on my button and also some darning needles now I've got two here one this larger one here I'll use to weave in my loose ends and this smaller one here the eye of the needle is a little bit smaller so it fits through the holes of my button so I'll be using the smaller one to attach my button to the front of the case so grab your hands grab your hook and a cuppa and let's make one of these lovely case protectors together begin you're going to want to make a slip knot and pop that on your hook in your preferred method and next we need to make a foundation chain of 11 chains so yarn over and pull through yarn over and pull through there's three four five six seven eight nine ten and eleven so we're going to start row one in the second chain from the hook so this on our hook doesn't count as a stitch, it's just our working yarn. Here's our first chain and here's our second. You're completely fine if you want to work into the front of the chain. I prefer to turn my chain over and work into the back bumps and you count down the bumps that run down the centre. Each bump is a chain. So there's my first, there's my second. So it's underneath this second back bump or into your second chain. You're going to insert your hook, yarn over, pulling up a loop two loops on your hook yarn over and pull through both loops so you've just placed your first double crochet please don't forget I use UK terminology in the US they are single crochets so we're going to place one double crochet in every chain along for row one and your stitch count at the end of row one should be 10 so we chained 11 skipped one and worked into the second one so this is my fourth I think yep fourth double crochet five six seven eight nine i'm just going into my last chain now for ten so at the end of row one you should be looking a little bit like that to move up to row two and all remaining rows in this pattern you'll need to chain one and turn your work and into this very first chain here is where we're going to start and we're just going to place a double crochet into there then we're going to place a double crochet in every stitch along so your stitch count will remain at 10. Make sure you're counting your stitches if you are newer to crochet to make sure that you're not missing any out at the beginning or at the end or you're not adding any stitches in which will give your, which will alter the, the shape of your case so it won't be nice and squared off. So I've just got two left. And there's my last double crochet for row two. So for rows three through to row 22, you're going to repeat row two. So you're just going to chain one, turn, and one double crochet in every stitch across. Your stitch count will always remain at 10. And if you want to press pause and come back to me when you're finishing up row 22, 
and we'll do row 23 together. I've just finished my 22nd row of this pattern and hopefully this is what you're looking like as well at this point. For row 23, we're going to chain one and turn our work. So what we're doing for round 23 is we're going to do an edging of double crochets that goes all the way around our case cover. It just neatens everything up and allows us to seam the edges together much neater. And it also allows us to put a little buttonhole on for our buttons to fasten the case once we're finished. So into this very first stitch here, we're going to place two double crochets. So insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop and place your first double crochet. And then go back into the same stitch and place a second double crochet. Next, what we want to do is place one double crochet in each of the next four stitches. So there's one, two, three and there's four next we're going to chain four so yarn over and pull through one two three and four and then we need to double crochet into the next stitch along and that's just created the loop to close our button and case once we've sewn it all together into the next three stitches you want to place one double crochet so there's one, two, and there's three. And that should bring you to your corner stitch. And in every corner stitch, we're gonna be placing three double crochets. So it just allows us to go around the corner and then work down the next side. So into this stitch, I'm gonna be inserting my hook, placing a double crochet. Going back into the stitch and placing a second double crochet and it's a good idea just to rotate your work as you go along. And there's my third double crochet into that stitch. Next what we want to do is we want to place one double crochet in every row end along the long edge. So if you are new to crochet, because I know that this is a beginner pattern, something that you can start to make that isn't too overwhelming for you. So I just want to show you where we're going to place these. When you look at your work, you should be able to see these ridges. So each of those ridges in between, you've got two rows of double crochet. So here's two rows, there's another two rows, there's another two rows. So we need to be making sure we place two double crochets into each of those as we go along to keep it nice and even. So let me show you how I crochet into my end row stitches to keep it as neat as possible and as easy as possible for you, for anybody who's new to crochet. So when you've got a bit of a longer stitch here, so every other one will be this bit of a longer stitch and it's very easy to insert your hook into that stitch and just pick up two loops and place your double crochet. By doing this and not crocheting around the whole of the stitch, you're not gonna have any gaps along the edges. So if you just crocheted around it, and if you are struggling and want to do that, that's fine. This is just a neater method for you to do. So then the next one along is here. So sometimes, depending on the yarn I'm working, I'll actually pop my hook into this stitch here, but this is quite a tight cotton to use because I've gone down a hook size to what's recommended for this cotton. So I just pull it apart slightly and you can see that the yarn is wrapped around this little bit of yarn there and it's that that I'm going to crochet around. So I'll insert my hook and place a double crochet around there. Then I've got a longer stitch again so I'll pick up two loops of that and place a double crochet. Then I've got the tighter stitch so the difference is the the stitches where you've done a chain to turn and the rows that you haven't turned on this side, you'll have turned it on this side. So then my next one down is a taller stitch. So I'll place one there and then I'll just pull that down a little bit and place one there. So make your way along the edge, placing one double crochet in every row end stitch. Come back to me when you are ready to work your corner stitch and we can do that together. I've just reached my corner stitch and this is where I started my foundation chain and into that very first chain that I will have made, I'm going to place three double crochets. Like before, as I'm placing these three double crochets, I'm going to pivot my work around. And I'm also going to crochet over this loose end and the knot just to weave it in a little bit 
and it saves me a job of weaving in at the end, an extra loose end. And then what we want to do is we want to place one double crochet into each of the next eight stitches. So we're working in the opposite side of our chain now from what we did originally. If you don't want to crochet over your loose end, just leave it hanging down the back and you can weave it in once you've finished. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, the seven, and eight. And that brings me to my next corner. So into this corner stitch again, I'm just gonna be placing three double crochets. One, pivoting my work around as I place them. Two. And there's three. So next, what you want to do is just like you did on the opposite side, place one double crochet in each of these end stitches. So just remember where you see these grooves, in between each of those grooves is two rows. So you want to make sure you're placing two stitches to each of those grooves going along. So if you want to press pause and I'll meet you back when you're coming up to this end of the edge. So I've just worked my way along the second long edge and I'm back to my starting point. Now, so if you remember when we started this round of edging, we put two double crochets into this very first stitch. We just need to pop one more in there to make it even so that every corner has three stitches. So I'm just gonna pop my hook into this space here and place my third double crochet to make all my corners even. You can then either slip stitch to join to the first stitch and fasten off that way. I'm gonna trim my yarn and do a bit of an invisible seam. So you want to leave yourself a good couple of inches and snip off and then pull that yarn through that last stitch that you've just done and we can thread our darning needle. If you're joining like I'm joining, you're going to skip this very first stitch here and run your needle from back to front underneath the top of the second stitch and pull your yarn through. So you need to pull it to about the size of an actual stitch that we're making because it's going to look like a false stitch when we've finished. Then you're going to take your needle and pop it through the centre from top to bottom underneath the, the two loops of the stitch there, just like that, and pull it through. And that just creates a join which is a little bit harder for people to see. Next you want to turn your work over. This is the right side here and we want to weave in the end on the back side which is where your yarn should be if you've just finished off like I have done. And you want to run under four or five stitches going along the back and pull that through. We're just going to go back and forth like this three times. We just need to miss this very first stitch or the last one that we pulled through, the first one that we're going past now. Because if we went underneath that as well, we'd just be pulling the yarn straight back out. So there's my second pass. Give it a little stretch to make sure it's not pulling on anything and then just repeat that, skipping this first one and going under the next one in exactly the same space that I've done all the others and pull that through. You can then trim off that loose end, give it a little stretch again, making sure that it's not pulling its shape or anything like that and then trim that off. You can turn your work right side again now and you want to have your darning needle threaded again for this next part and what you want to do from the bottom so the part that the button loop is is the top so you're going down to this corner here from your middle corner stitch so we're counting that as one we're going to count up ten stitches so there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and just pop your hook just 
underneath the back loop only of that stitch just so we mark it if you're more comfortable using a stitch marker use a stitch marker for this little bit and then you're going to fold your work right side together and we're just going to seam together those 10 stitches so i'm only picking up the back loops so i'm going through the opposite one on that side and pulling through going through the back loop of the next stitch up and the back loop opposite it then pulling that through and I'll do that all the way down for a total of 10 stitches so there's three four five six seven eight nine and here's my last one for ten you can then what you will want to do is pull firmly on both ends of this yarn that you've just seamed it together and that pulls it together nice and tightly nice and securely along your edges and then you just want to weave in these loose ends just like you did at the top of your carry case so going under four or five stitches then back in the opposite direction and then back in the opposite direction again one more time so there's one and there's three and then you can snip that loose end and do exactly the same to your second loose end best to sew those loose ends in before you move on to seaming together your next side just because you don't want them coming undone and then you'll just repeat that process on the other side so you're starting from your corner stitch again counting down 10 stitches so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 so it should be folding pretty much where it is meant to but I just like to check and I'll just pop my needle through the whilst I just get my yarn and I'm going to seam this together off camera but if you want to go ahead weave in this extra loose end seam this one together weave in your ends and then come back to me when you're ready to move up up to the next part so once you've finished seaming everything together your case should be looking a little bit like this and we can flip it right side out And then all we need to do is attach our button just here in the centre. So I've already threaded my needle because I wanted it to be in the same colour as the actual case. I've just pulled apart a little string of the yarn. Can you see if, if you're newer to crochet, your yarn will pull apart if it's similar to mine and not sort of a messy yarn. And you can just use a couple of strands then if you do want to attach your button using the same colour but you don't have a cotton thread that matches. So I'm just going to pop my button roughly in the middle, pull my yarn through thread my button on it and then just attach it on now this isn't an ideal needle to be attaching buttons on you're better with a straight needle and um, I just couldn't find one this morning but I'm saying I couldn't find them they were all downstairs I was just being a bit lazy my sewing kit's actually downstairs and my craft room is upstairs and I couldn't be so having a straight needle will make it easier for you so just keep 
attaching your button until you feel it's secure enough. I'm quite happy with that. I just turn it inside out again. And I just make a little knot on the inside here. I do a double knot, one, and two. And then I'll just weave these ends just to make it extra secure, just under a couple of stitches each end. And then hopefully we don't lose any buttons on our cases. And then you can snip that off. And I'll just do the same with the next end. So once all your loose ends are sewn in, you can just flip it right side out again. Grab your ear pods and check it out for size. So there's my ear pods and they fit beautifully. And I think I'm going to get a lot of use out of these because I'm always scared of scuffing my case up when I put them in my handbag. So quite excited about this make because I'll be using it a lot myself. Drop me a comment below if you've got any questions and I'll try my best to answer them. And if you found this tutorial helpful, then I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel. It just means that you won't miss out on my next free pattern or stitch tutorial. And it also supports Rocco Baby Crochet as well. So take care, have a great week and I'll see you all real soon. Bye.